Let's create another easy journal page. This time we'll be using a photo, a sentiment, and a button. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria, and this is your channel for vintage inspired art. We are tackling prompt number one from my prompt list, which is linked below. It's number one saying, create a page using a photo, include a button and a sentiment. I'm going to circle this as always to remind me that I've done that one. And today we're going to be working in my beautiful door journal from Allison. I will again link Allison's Instagram handle below in case you're interested in one of these very, very gorgeous journals. I love this so, so much and I'm trying, it's not easy, but I'm trying to not make this super bulky or too much of a gator mouth, but it is like maybe, maybe half full probably not even and it's already spreading so I'm gonna do my best not to make anything too bulky in here so I have already marked the page that I want to work on which is this one and I have marked it with this writing board that I made in another video in a very grungy style and if you're interested in seeing this video if you haven't I will link that one for you below as well so this comes in handy if you want to maybe stamp or write something and you have uneven items like here i have a pretty bulky pocket so if i want to stamp or write something on this page it's very handy to put this in between to have a flat surface to work on but for now we're just going to be gluing things so i will clamp these down and the items I will be working with are actually items from my new shop <laughs> it, it's amazing that I can say that I have I'm working with items from my own shop like this is really a dream come true but you work with whatever you want you don't have to do this in the vintage style I love vintage so I'm gonna use vintage photos but you can use any photos maybe you've recently taken, you know, do, do whatever you want. But if you want to use the same photos or similar photos that I'm using, then you can definitely find these in my shop. And I also have some sentiments. I have some inspirational life quotes from my shop. And by the way, I've printed this one at 70%, just so you're aware that they are, in original, they are bigger. And I've printed these at 80%. So I always like giving you bigger images, but you can always shrink them down because it's hard to enlarge them, but you can always shrink them down easily. So again, you don't have to get this. Um, you can stamp a sentiment, you might have stickers. There's so many options. So first thing is to probably choose a photo I want to work with. And I actually kind of like this photo strip. This is kind of like Tim Holtz style. <laughs> and so I'm going to cut this one out. So it has, uh, so obviously they're all women. There's two with little children here and the middle one is just the lady. So I'm gonna start off by cutting this out. And I did print this on 160 GSM smooth paper. The sentiments I, I printed on regular copy paper. And if you are <clears throat> interested in my shop, I didn't want to make a whole separate video about my shop, but if you are interested, then I will show you some of the items I have and some a part of my shop in the second half of this video. Okay, so now I have this strip and I think the size works really well with what I have here. And the prompt also said to include a button and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit <laughs> because as I said, I don't want this journal to be super bulky. So I have this embossing folder that has buttons. So I'm gonna do that instead 
if I can still find this, I believe this was AliExpress. If I can find it, you will find it linked below as well. So I think this is really fun. I just have to think about how to include these. I think to start out with, I'm going to distress these with my vintage photo so that they come out better. And I'm gonna use my regular inking tool. This is a 200 GSM beige cardstock, by the way. I think I want to have torn edges. And I don't know how big a piece I will want to include the, because the page is not super wide. So as you know, no white edges allowed in vintage journaling for me. <laughs> so I will of course ink those all up as well. I could also try cutting out one of these, maybe like this button here and then poke through the holes and kind of use it like a real button. Let's see if that will work. So I have this pokey tool here. I'm going to go through the holes there in the middle. through some twine. I just threaded it through and made a double knot on top and I'm just gonna snip the ends. So we have this now. And we can maybe add that somehow and let me maybe now think about the sentiment I want to add so as I said these are inspirational life quotes and I think I'm going to take this one which says the best way to predict your future is to create it by Abraham Lincoln so I'm going to cut this out but actually I don't want the red border for this spread so I'm going to cut the border off. And next, since I printed this on regular white copy paper, I want to make it a little more vintage using my tea dye distress oxide with my blending brush. I will link a set of these for you below in case you can't find them locally. Just get rid of some of the black of the border there. Now I'm just gonna go over it. So again, these brushes are great for flat surfaces, for stenciling, not so much for the edging. For the edging, these tools are better and this looks nasty by the way. <laughs> I should probably change that. And I actually do want to frame it a little bit, so I'm going to use my Espresso Truffle Memento ink to go around the edges. I will link these Memento inks for you below as well. I love these. I have not too many colors. And I'm doing a horrible job inking up these edges because I'm getting it all over. <laughs> but let's just say it looks more vintage this way. <laughs> There we go. So we have that, we have a button, we have a sentiment. So we have all the elements that the prompt says we should have. <laughs> and now we just gotta figure out how to put them all together and 
add some more background, some interesting background elements. I think one of the elements I will want to add somehow is of course some coffee dyed cheesecloth that I have. I feel like I haven't used cheesecloth in a while now. And next to me, I have my box of wonderful vintage scrap pieces. I don't want to cover up all the background because I love this paper. So I just want to set some more like accents. Ooh, like I really love this punched paper. Now maybe this one here, but that definitely needs some vintaging. And I think I also want something sewn, like sewn with my sewing machine, but I figure I have to figure out how to best do that or where I could do that. Maybe what I could do is I could like attach the photos and then maybe this. No, I think what I will do is I will take this to my sewing machine and maybe stitch along the edge here a little bit. So I did some kind of messy zigzag stitching with black thread along this edge and along this edge. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it does add another dimension here and I really like having different kind of textures. So I'm really happy with this piece so far. Now I do want some of that cheesecloth. So I will just cut off a strip here and see if I can use that. I found a piece of a scrap of a coffee dyed doily. So maybe we can figure out a way to use this as well. Yep, like that. Then I have this scrap from a digital print. It has these floral neutrals. This here is some like glassine type paper, which was from a vintage photo album and also really fun to use. I always, always say this, if you use neutrals and you layer them, you really can't go wrong. With collaging if you're unsure if you're insecure about your own collaging stick to neutral colors and practice practice with small collages to start off with maybe on little snippets or something and then to do bigger ones in your journal maybe when you feel more confident now I still have the sentiment of course and I kind of think like it would get lost a little bit if we just add it like this so i want to put it on a different background and i found these these are some scraps of another digital i think these and the floral one are actually from maureen so maureen astrid has her own wonderful youtube channel at the moment she has a series of like 10 minute projects they are really cute i really love what she's doing there and she also has obviously beautiful digitals and I think she provides a free digital on her site like once a month and then I think it stays free for a month and then 
later on I think she she charges for it a little bit and some I think she has like for you can pay what you want but definitely check out her site I will leave a link to her channel and to her shop down below for you as well she is a wonderful resource Maureen is from the Netherlands and I hope to be able to meet her one day when we can all travel again freely she is a wonderful person and someone I can call my friend in the meantime even though we've never met using my art glitter glue for this so this is kind of oh I mean it has a little bit still in there but not too much and my plan when I bought this bottle, especially because of the middle tip, was to see if I could then, once it's empty, fill it up with some tacky glue and see whether that would work just as well. Because I used to use these small plastic bottles with a very thin metallic nib and it was always a hassle because the glue wouldn't really come out. So I'm really curious about this bottle, but if it doesn't work as well as I'm hoping it will, I will go back to buying the original art glitter glue just because it has been a revelation <laughs> in my collaging especially. It is so handy to have. So now this sticks out a little bit more and of course we still have our button so i will let you know how that goes once this is empty and i didn't buy this for the longest time i mean it's not the cheapest glue but i didn't buy it for the longest time mostly because i thought it had glitter in it and i didn't want i don't know why it's called art glitter is that the brand oh that's the name so www.artglitter.com so that is misleading because <laughs> i really thought that it had glitter in it and i didn't want that so that's what kept me from buying it for the longest time. <laughs> they need to rethink their marketing. <laughs> Am I the only one who, who thought so? Maybe, maybe I am. So there's our sentiment with the fake button. And we can then just add that on top. But I think now I can go ahead and start gluing. And this time I'll do from the bottom up. I don't know why. Sometimes I like this way, sometimes I like the other way. Maybe it depends on how many small pieces I have. So these aren't too small. So it shouldn't be too hard to do from the bottom up. I prefer using this glue also because you can do it one-handed. I used to use glue stick a lot, but then you have to put it down and, and have something underneath and it's just, this is just so much quicker because you can have it in your hand and put the glue on. Oh, I forgot this piece. <laughs> can we still add that? Do we want to still add that? Let's leave it for another collage. But we do want our sentiment. This is what we have now. Liking that. But I feel like it's not really done. I found this paper flower that I have, I think I've coffee dyed this, actually it was a brighter yellow. So I'm thinking what if we add this up here and it needs something in the middle because right now it has a hole in the middle. So I still have this left over from the die cut and I do have this tiny button here. So I'm going to try to cut this out and see if we can add that one to the middle of the flower. Oh, 
<laughs> that is cute. Almost wanna make a little smiley. Should I? I don't know. No, I think that would kind of change the character of the spread. I don't wanna don't want it to be too smiley. <laughs> so I will just glue up the middle here. Don't wanna glue the petals down. And I feel it needs one more accent somewhere here because I see this accent and I see this accent. I feel it needs something here to balance it. I found this little butterfly in my stash and I think this would go really well somewhere here with this lady. And I think that would balance out our collage. Because now I see a triangle. I don't know if you see it, but I see it. Now I'm actually thinking maybe I should add a couple more butterflies. <laughs> Once you start, you can't stop. And I have these two here. And in order not to create more, how should I say? You know, I, I, I always like the triangle and I wanna keep the triangle, but yet I wanna add two more elements. So best way to do that is to kind of make clusters that will still serve as one element. So what I mean by that, for example, we have this small butterfly. Now, if I put it here, it will be a fourth element. And in, in, this is just in my opinion, how, how my mind works. <laughs> but by adding it to here, for example, for me, visually, this makes a cluster. So this is still one element. So I still have one, two, three dominant elements in a triangle. Now this may, might not make sense to anyone else, <laughs> but it makes sense to me. And if I wanna add another one, again, I cannot add it as a separate thing because I don't want four, I want the uneven number and I like the three. So I could add it to this button flower and again, that would make a cluster and that would still be three elements in my eyes. I don't know if you agree with me, but for me, this really makes sense. And I wanna glue this on pointing this way because this one is pointing this way. And this one again can be pointing this way. So this creates a dynamic rather than having them all point in one way or two in one way and one the other way, I think they need to be one like this, one like this, and one like this to have the dynamic that I'm looking for. <laughs> sometimes it's really hard to explain aesthetics because sometimes there isn't really a logic behind it. It's more like a feeling. Now, since I have some uneven background, I don't think I will draw any feelers because they will look so wonky that it's probably better not to give them feelers or antennas. So now this looks complete to me. So we have one butterfly, two butterflies, and three butterflies. I am super excited to share the first peek into my store. The link for it, of course, is below in the description box. Check out some freebies that I have for you there. So this is the about page of my shop. And then you just go to the shop page to see all the items I have. I currently have 50 items and I will, of course, be adding more with time. And here's just a little peek when you scroll down what you will see you have an option to change currencies so I have in total six different currencies for you to choose from so hopefully one of them will work for you you can sort it with different criteria and on the left you have different categories which are here called collections and you can just click on them and of course and just see those that are relevant for that category. The biggest one is the vintage ephemera category. For example, looking at the vintage children's book, 
you see first the overview if there's multiple pages and then you can click on each individual page to see what the actual pages will look like when you get them. And of course it's instant download. I currently only have digital products. I will have some physical products like journals later on when, when all of the pandemic situation with mailing has calmed down. So here, for example, is one of the ones that are that is a freebie at the moment until September 7th. So if you add that to your cart, you will see the cart pops up and then you can view your cart. And then you see on the bottom left here, it says enter a promo code. So if you enter 49 free in that field between September 1 and September 7, and then you click apply, you will see it immediately takes off the amount when you check out. So now, so now you would be at zero. I know you can't see it here because it was unfortunately cut off of my screen recording, but that would then take it to zero, but only for the items that are marked as freebies. Here you see there's, a, in, in, there's an Instagram page, so you see all, everything what I post on Instagram is also here in case you don't have Instagram yourself, but you can still look at my posts here maybe to get inspiration. You can click onto it and see all the stories behind it and the, you can read the text and everything. So I think that's fun if you just need some more inspiration. Then you can see links to all my social media and of course there's also a contact form if there's something you want to tell me whether it's good or hopefully not so bad <laughs> um, you can put it all in there and i will get back to you as soon as possible i wanted to also show you what some of these printouts look like when they're actually printed out so i've printed these out on regular copy paper most of them and I have a Canon TS5050 inkjet printer. It is nothing special. It's a fairly cheap printer. I will maybe link that below in case you're looking for a printer, but these are just regular copies. And so I have the category, I think the biggest category is the vintage ephemera one. So these are some of those. These actually are one of my favorites. I was inspired to put these in my shop by one of the videos that I saw by Maud where she was gluing these together and these are just so fun. So I have a few samples here that I have <laughs> glued together and they're just the cutest little envelopes. They are actually envelopes and you can put stuff in them and I think they are so fun. So that's what these are. And then, yeah, there's some book page backgrounds in smaller versions with um, either French or German text. These are so much fun, I think, to cut out and then to collage on and, and use as ephemera in, in your journals. Then we have some bigger size music papers as you can use them as background or you can tear them up for collaging. There's some other ads from vintage magazine, these typical vintage ads that I think are so cool to use. Then there's some greeting cards, some German beautiful vintage greeting cards. And we have these cute girls here. These are actually birthday cards, but they can be used as anything. Then we have some vintage book covers. These I've actually printed on heavier cardstock. These I think are really cute to use maybe as journaling cards or just as ephemera cards in your journals. These would also be really cute to just shrink up and use as small ephemera. And these I love as well. They're vintage women's fashions from the 1940s from Vienna, Austria. So we have some of these. Again, this, these can be used as either journaling cards or something like that. Then we have some old European money, also really fun ephemera, I think. There are some more vintage ads here in German. This is a vintage savings book a vintage 
telegram congratulating a couple on their wedding. There's some more vintage documents. These happen to be me old medical documents. There's some more like ephemera cards that you can print out and just add to your journal or maybe write on the back. These are some collage nature tags that I have scanned. This is my own artwork. These are scans from a beautiful vintage book that I have. They also make great journaling cards. Here we have some mushroom cards. Perfect for September. There's some more mushroom clip art. So these are currently in this week, they are freebies as well as the vintage butterflies. They are also freebies at the moment for one week. Then we have some sentiments here. There's some nature themed sentiments for you to cut out. There are some travel quotes. There's positive affirmations. There's inspirational life quotes and there's crafting sentiments. Most of these are really funny. So go read them. Even if you don't buy them, just read them. They are actually so funny. Then we have some blank labels for you, which I think are always cool. There's some number labels as well. And they also have a couple of empty ones in that one. Then I have a category which is like sewn or stitched. So I have some scans of my own snippet rolls for you to either use as they are or to decorate even further. These are great to either use as belly bands or to cut smaller pieces and then just use them as decoration or collaged elements. There's some tuck spots that are, are again scans from my sewn projects that, that are really cute to just cut out and then you can use them to stick other ephemera in. There's some other fabric ephemera that you could just cut out and you maybe back with some cardstock and then use it as pockets or you can use this as a flip up or whatever. There's some fabric butterfly tags, which again are scans of my own sewing. Then here's some embroidery squares, which I have embroidered myself and scanned. These are also really fun pockets or tuck spots or even journaling cards. Then I have some more scans of my artwork. This goes more into the grungy area. So some cards for you to use there. Then there's some mixed media postcards for you, some of my own artwork. If you like my style, you are welcome to have some of that in your journal. <laughs> if you like the more grungy style, then this might be for you. Here's some classic tag shapes, also still in the very grungy, very grungy style here. There's some more journaling cards, all with these beautiful vintage photos. Here's some two and a half inch circles, which are really fun, I think. Very, very grungy. And here's some two and a half inch vintage circles, like collage circles. Of course, you can always print them smaller if you need smaller circles. Then there's a category with like photos and cabinet cards. So there's either couples or women. <clears throat> then there's the back size of the beautiful cabinet cards that I find here at vintage flea markets. I mean, these back sides, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Then we have the front sides of cabinet cards. I have two different sets. They're all either women or couples. Here's the other set. It's also great for shrinking down if you want smaller images. And finally, I have some more like background images. So here actually I have 
my first journaling kit that I ever designed digitally. So I used vintage elements, like I used original vintage uh, book pages. Uh, so that's the script in the background, for example. And then I used other uh, images that I scanned from vintage books and I made this journaling kit. This, this one is called a rhododendron journaling kit and it has four background pages. So one, two, three, and four. Oh, sorry, it has five. <laughs> it also has um, a, just a plain script one that you could use in any journal or in any combination with any other kit. And then there's one with the ephemera. It has some tuck spots and some just some fun small ephemera to cut out, some tags, and then some like journaling cards. Then we have some ledger paper, German beautiful ledger paper. This is a set of three different ones. And there's some like master boards, collaged master boards for you to cut up or to use as backgrounds as you wish. And finally, there's one with system, some neutral backgrounds for you to use as you wish. I think neutral backgrounds are great to use. So that's what I have so far. It's 50 in total, 50 different downloads for you. Some of them are have multiple pages. Some of them are just one page. So I hope there's something for everyone. I hope you check it out. Even if you don't buy anything, at least check out the freebies or maybe, maybe it'll just in, in, inspire you to use what you have already looking at the Instagram feed. Thank you for taking the time to look at my new items and my new shop. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.